one small part of my trip to Japan as a bar takeover on June 5th in Harajuku. I'll be at Sadai Coffee with Ariel. I brought two coffees to serve. What are the two coffees that I brought? Hey, 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 welcome to the Valor Coffee Podcast. My name is Ethan, and I sat down with my best buddies, Ross and Riley. We really got into it today. There's a little tension in the room, so uh, have some grace for us. We brewed up three different coffees again because we're so spoiled with all these awesome coffees. So we got stuff coming from Contempo, Day Glow, Touchy. Yeah, really sweet time. And honestly, we kind of just shoot the breeze this week. So look, if you're like, what are they going to talk about? I better get something really important out of this. You know, hey, see how it goes. But we had a great time just catching up, talking about hospitality, Riley's trip to New York, some of the ins and outs of sourcing and roasting and green buying. Always a great time. As always, the program is brought to you by Clive Coffee. Thanks, Clive. We got a little code VALOR5 that you can use at checkout, and that gets you 5% off Luca and Eureka products. Check them out. And we also talk about our buddies over at Third Wave Water. It's honestly been a great experience brewing it up all the coffees for the program, sorry, program with Third Wave Water. So definitely check them out as well. And hey, you know, as it goes, if you like the show, like, comment, subscribe, follow along with us. It's always a treat to hear from you guys about what's awesome, anything you want us to talk about. So we appreciate the feedback and hope you enjoy the show. Bonjour. Well, in the spirit of uh, a computer not working yesterday, when Ross was supposed to record a podcast with Jared Truby of Cat and Cloud, uh, we're here and we're going to press record and talk for a time. An so hour. If you remember the Coffee Sometimes podcast of days old, this might be a little bit similar. And maybe we'll find some gold along the way, right? I think that we're really like fun, interesting people. And if you we- do? I do. That's and awesome. if we just gather around a hot mic, maybe talk about someone's trip to the biggest city, New York. The biggest apple. We can even talk about my upcoming trip, you know? And I have some things that I want to say, too, on this program that you guys have no idea. So there's some bombs. Why did you that, wait to tell us that until we hit record? Well, it's, it's this is the perfect episode to talk about what I want to talk about, so. Okay. Yeah, I got on uh, a call with Jared yesterday. And I was I was feeling really great about it. Um, I was trying to decide, you know, what I wanted to talk with him about. I had a topic in mind. I wanted to talk to him about uh, what it's really like to come up as a roaster. You like start as, you know, you're roasting in someone else's space. You're getting green coffee from wherever mm-hmm. you're getting it from, probably from a bigger importer. At least this was our journey, and I wanted to like compare notes with their journey starting up. And uh, I, after SCA, I just had this thought that was like, man, what if we could move our coffee menu to only getting coffee from single farmers, like no co-ops, no co-ops, um. Either single farmers or uh, or coffees that have a really good story behind it, even if it involves multiple farmers. So like our Chiroso Ombre slot is two farmers that are neighbors that combine their Chiroso bridles. So that's a cool story. But um, like the thing that I guess I was trying to move away from, and I don't even know if I should want to move away from this, and that's what I was want- wanting to talk to Jared about, is you've got a huge list of coffees from a big importer spot sheet spot sheet and there's some coffees on there that might look interesting to you whether that's price point or flavor notes or variety whatever and you're like yeah i'll have a sample of that and then you try it and then you buy it and that's the story yeah like on taste alone yeah like what and price like you know what kind of story is that that's not uh yeah that's not really there's no deeper intention behind that besides we just really loved this coffee and wanted to share it with the world, which is not like an evil thing to do. Yeah, and a lot of times those importers are doing the back-end research about the coffee and you can get a lot of, you can kind of like pull some narrative from those sheets, you know, and still try to convey a message, but it's just less personal. 
Yeah, I mean, Unblended has a spot sheet, you know? Like, I could buy an amazing coffee on spot from Unblended. Definitely not as intentional as booking out a coffee where, he, you know, I would, I would say, like, step one is that you just get really ahead of your coffee menu and you're booking out coffees, which means that you're then getting coffees that otherwise would never have hit the spot sheet. Yeah. Everything about your menu is way more planned and structured. That alone takes infrastructure, which we have only ever had, you know. Um, we did that. We've always done that. We've always forward booked coffees, but we are getting, you know, to the point where I would say that that's more, more of our menu than not. And then beyond that, it's like go to origin and talk about a specific lot or mm-hmm. process or whatever. That stuff takes a lot. Yeah. And it's just not, it's not something that, you know, like we can even really do. And it's especially not something that someone just getting started and roasting in someone else's space can really do. Yeah. I was talking about this with my buddy Kent last night. You guys oh know boy. Kent? No, your buddy Kent? Yeah. yeah. Okay. He's my friend. I hung out with him outside of work last night. Is that cool? And we weren't invited. Yeah. Whenever I was supposed to hang out with Kent, he like ditches me to go to Asheville. When you ask him to go to Asheville. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Anyways, sorry. Tension is sorry. high yeah. in the room Jeez. right now. We're, we're working through. Well, this is going to be y'all. a good time to sort through all that because we don't have a topic. But And we have an hour. I was talking to Kent about this last night uh, where I heard uh, Jeff Bezos. Are you guys familiar? You love Bezos. Bookstore guy? Book, the guy who started the, book, the online bookstore. Loves store. books. Yeah. Um, Bookworm. He, he was talking about how he has focused his business, Amazon, <laughs> towards, towards uh, things in the human psyche that are timeless basically. Mm. So one of those things was like, you get your product fast. Humans value just like sort of speed and convenience, speed, convenience. So that's going to be our thing is we, and and maybe another thing would be like, so this is in the convenience realm, but you can get anything on Amazon. So that's also convenient because it's one-stop shop, put it all in your cart and it's all going to be there. Do you guys like, do you guys remember when you signed up for Amazon Prime back in the day and you got free two-day shipping, mm-hmm. that was like crazy that that was a thing. But now it's there's there's facilities everywhere and you can get it same day. So they focus their business very hard towards a a human value that will last throughout generations. And I was thinking about that for us. What is What is that for us? And I think one of them has got to be something like human connection. Mm. And I think that's one of the reasons why this podcast has been great for us and great for our business and great for our uh, relationship to the rest of the industry because it's connective. Like people feel connected to us and we can connect to other people through this podcast. And that's why, that's one of the main things that has been driving me towards wanting to only source coffee that is from a single farmer is the connection to that farmer. And then uh, we roast coffee and then there's a connection to our wholesale partners and the guests and people buying the coffee for home. And so there's that, there's that main core value of human connection. That's not one of our core values connection, but I feel like it, it basically is Mm and how we operate. But whenever you source coffee from a a co-op, not that that's inherently an evil thing to do. It's fine to bring in a really nice coffee from a co-op and sell it for a profit. That's fine. And provide value for the world. It's not a bad thing. Um, but there's less of that human connection. Uh, so I just want to... Wh- what do you guys think are other sort of core values like that of the world? Consumers that we are trying to hit maybe in our cafes or in other parts of our business. Mm. Yeah. I was thinking like, you know, our whole cafes have been predicated upon genuine hospitable connection, you know, so letting that transfer to how we make deals in uh, the roasting world would just make complete sense. Yeah. Um, There is just, I mean, the thing that I've just been harping on so much in our orientations with the team is just like 
the humanity aspect of like, man, we didn't hire you to carbon copy us. We just want you to be yourself at work, you know, because that's the only way we're going to get. And that, that, that sounds cute, but I think there's just a really legit form to that, which is like the only way we're going to actually experience the best version of your hospitality if it if it's coming from a place of like security and identity of I know who I am and I'm excited to share that with somebody not I'm putting on a show I'm putting on a mask and I'm going to try my best and I hope nobody takes the mask off because then I'm so I think in roasting too it's awesome to you know grab this coffee and see Nestor Lasso on here and you're like oh that's so cool wow yeah um, but I know when we started talking about this a few weeks ago, you were saying too, like in places like Ethiopia, a ton, 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 ton of the coffees are from co-ops, right? That's just like yeah, washing how stations. It, how it works? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they all get funneled into a washing station and then kind of get, you know, put together. And it's a lot harder. I think we've had one Ethiopia ever that wasn't from a washing station. It was a single farmer. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. And uh, it was called uh, Tega and Tula Farms. You guys remember that one? No, I don't. Honestly, we had it. It was a, it was a flash in the pan. It was quick. We didn't have much of it. Yeah, um, and it was good, but like we didn't, you know, like that just doesn't. You don't you don't see that very mm-hmm. often. Yeah, I, I'm sort of just honestly inexperienced with even weighing the pros and cons of getting coffee from a co-op, like let's just take Ethiopia, for example, getting coffee from a co-op versus getting a coffee like that from a farm, single farm. Cause like, let's say you have that coffee we source and judging by how you talk about it. And the fact that I don't remember it, it probably wasn't one of our best coffees. Mm -hmm. So let's say you have that as one example. And the other example is like the Ethiopia we have right now is freaking awesome. And it's from a washing station. And so which one do you go with? Do you still go with a coffee that we're not as excited about, but it is a single farm, so that has a value in another way? Even just beyond the marketing side, I'm not really talking about that Mm -hmm. of like, oh, we can pitch this better to market because, but like maybe more towards sustainability, more towards the economy of supporting the economy of that, of that area because you're putting it towards a single farm versus a co-op. I just don't know all that. That's the thing. If you're, if you're wanting, if you're doing this for an, like a, like an ethical, if you're wanting to more diversify for ethical reasons, you just need to be finding your farm gate price, which is the price that the farmer received and sold the coffee for. And if that is way below the livable means, then it's like, okay, probably shouldn't go in this direction of buying this coffee. If it's above it, then you're like, awesome. This is a good thing that I'm going to support, even if I am buying this coffee. And it is listed as from a washing station. This washing station pays out great wages. Yeah. Because, I mean, there there's a lot of those. There's a lot of excellent washing stations who buy coffees for reasonable prices. So, speaking of coffee, what we're working with on the table today... How about this? What'd you guys brew, brew up for me? We got we got three coffees because we're we're just so um, we're lavished right now with uh, with coffees from all over the country. So thank you everybody that sends us coffee. Um, we have the one here from. Do you know how this ended up in our clutches from you? JP gave it to me. Thank you, JP McKenzie of Meadowlark for. Do you think they like to say rare glow? For their high end stuff, I think they do like to say that, but it's from Dayglow. Rare Glow, Dayglow, um, Anaerobic, Natty, Columbia, Bourbon, Cedra. It's awesome. Nestor Lasso. Pretty crazy. I'm it's really, more. really good. It is. Yeah. It's phenomenal. There's it's, major uh, honeydew, like the really sweet parts of honeydew. Yeah. Mm. Really nice depth. Not, it's not like slappy around. Acid, which Ooh, is fun. It's like so slap good. your mama acid. Slap your mama yeah. good. Um, and then, I don't know, how did this one get in our clutches? I think it came with a note. Maybe we met them at SEA. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure it's a SEA connection. Mm-hmm. Contempo Roast out of uh, Southwestern Ohio. Ohio. Centerville. Huh. But Southwest. 
I'm confused. I'm conflicted. <laughs> uh, Some a, things aren't adding up. A Dominican honey, organic. Come on, hundred um, percent arabica, baby. Super chocolatey. It was yeah, easy drinking, good time. Thank you for sharing that. And then we got. Do you know how this one got in our clutches? Was that a was that a PJ? That could have been Paul. Paul, was this you? Fess I feel up, like bro. it was. If it wasn't, I'm sorry to whoever gave that to us. But well, Paul gave us the swab and we had last week, but oh. he does give us coffee all the time. Where did that and we're very grateful from? for that, Paul. Thank you. Um, no, 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 no. Super official. Oh, perfect. Gave it to us at Expo. Oh, nice. You know, it did have a longer roast date. So I was like, how did this? Uh, Natty Rwanda Akagera Ikizere. Now we have the washed version of this coffee. Oh, that's natural. I didn't. I yeah. I actually. I was okay. drinking this and I was like, "What?" I know in live time realizing because I was interested to see such fun uh, tasting notes: lime sizzle, what? <laughs> Pineapple <laughs> twist, what? Lime sizzle. Um, what do you guys think that is? I would imagine like the effervescent acidity you experience when you bite into a lime. The effervescence is said to do when you bite into a lime. <laughs> but, Buying the limes. By, wa- by Was Walters. Um, I, I just love their type. I love their logo. I know you do. And I love uh, their little stickers. So Very nice. Thanks, Touchy. And so Ross was, did a little long black and espresso. Really nice, Ross. Yeah, good really, work, Ross. Good I just, work. I just did my best. That's all. Here's the thing, man, about making fun espressos. We just got better success when we just put the little that we have in an espresso grinder. Yeah. And so it's been in the Anthem Scotty. Here's the other thing about espresso and these coffees is that they're brewed with third wave water. Come on, baby. And the espresso. Uh, vibrant, right? Isn't that what we always say? I mean, I haven't had a, a bad cup yet. It's only been a few <laughs> yeah. weeks, but... I just feel like the extraction's really even. Yeah, for sure. So... I always speak from personal experience because isn't that what we should all do, right? I use third wave water at home moving from filtered well water and the the difference has been insane. Some are saying 60%. 60% better at least. Guaranteed the by, uh, by us. But we always use the light roast profile here and the espresso profile, but they also have dark roast, medium roast, low acidity, uh, Another one. Cold brew. <laughs> Cold brew. Hey, do you think you guys are going to do a side-by-side while I'm gone? You just got to go buy more distilled water. Where do you even get that? Anywhere. Anywhere. Oh, it's easy. Yeah, it's actually really easy. Uh, oh. you, people use it for their formula, so they got to have it around. Dude, what? Dude. Formula One racing? You yeah, Formula it? One racing. They put that instead of gas? Yeah. Uh, but if you want to try third wave water, you can use code Valor at checkout and get 10% off. We were talking about how good of a deal it is before we started this program. I was, I, I just didn't expect there to be 12 sticks in a packet. It's 12 gallons of coffee like, water. That, right that lasts you a while. Yeah. So, so 10% off and an already good deal. We're kind of for, doing for you, vibrant. We're coffee. doing you a favor. So you should send a thank you or something. Dude, when is turbo diesel coming out? I would say probably like today. It was supposed to come out on Friday. And the funny thing is that it didn't. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, so nice. Web yeah. store today. Yeah. Totally. That's exciting. Totally. Dude, yes. Brown box. Oh, it looks so good. I like the brown. I think we might break the internet. With Some it. people say if it's brown, flush it down. But I say that brown box looks gas. Watch out, Hershey's. We're coming for you with the brown branding. Yeah, I'm stoked about that. And I'm stoked to see how it's received in our cafes in suburban Atlanta. Do, do you want to put it on drip? Ever? Oh, man. Um, I think we have to have two. We'd have to have two, but I just I love having the green box on drip. Because yeah. selfishly, I just love our drip. Yeah, dude. And we we the like the Columbia Santa Maria is Slap your mama good. <laughs> we, I feel like I feel like we've just I'm been sorry, mom. <laughs> we've been really hitting with the green boxes lately. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I totally see how we could maybe if we move to the two offerings, because I feel like we would probably go a little more freaky. Sure. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. But then I feel like having the concept of like dark and 
like medium. Core it's hard. We just need three drips. I think. Right. I know. I think the the green box would be considered light roast to use like second wave terms. <laughs> someone comes into the cafe the day after. Someone they're like, "Yeah, can I have like a dark coffee?" And I'm like, "Yeah, this drip's perfect." And then I serve it to them again, or it's the light option the next day. Right. Hey, that's a me problem. That's a me problem. Sure. Okay. So how if somebody if somebody said, "I'll have a drip," how would you describe? If we had the turbo diesel and the that's green what box. I that's what I don't like. I don't like mm. more questions. I think it makes the experience worse. You you'd rather have less options, but something that you know will hit more people. Yeah, which I want to just have like a default, but also have a dis- a way to display the feature drip to where if people see it, they ask for it. We want the feature drip to move, you know. Yeah, because I just like the. So a businessman already like kind of in a rush and then is like large coffee. And I'm like, we actually have two offerings for our coffee today. Uh, we have this one and this one. The one I like, I like about it, but it's just like, ah, I just want to be like, yeah. But then do I just make that decision for them? You know, should sure. I judge him? But then what if he wanted to make the decision? What if he was like, yeah, I really want, do you have anything like, like whoosh, anaerobic? Whoosh. <laughs> do you have like Hama on, you know? <laughs> Yeah, we just grind it on the UK. Uh, whatever. I don't, guys. I don't want to talk about that anymore. I'm just nervous. I have another question for you. I have two questions after. So okay. I have three questions. <sighs> okay, so this whole notion of uh, notion sort of like judging people in the cafe, basically, <laughs> but like you're doing it for their their own good. A better word is discernment, but yes. Okay, so you're discerning a guest that walks up, you know, like that's a perfect example, a business dude in a rush, large coffee. That's all he says to you. And you're trying to serve him in the best way you can for him. Right. So you're like, you may not even say anything. You're like, yeah, got you. And like, boom, he's maybe on a call. Like, do you know what I say every time they do, like someone's really in a rush and they'd say that? No. I say, bro, you're making this way too easy on me. I'm like, come on, give me something harder. And I'm like, I'm going to get this for you right now, bro. Yeah. And then he's like, stop calling me, bro. Yeah. And I'm like, sorry, bro. I'm th- sorry. Can you think of like, can you think of any times where your discernment was way off? Where you like kind of had this, had someone pigeonholed and then you, mm. you like take a chance to meet them there. And then they're like, oh no, I don't want that. I bet I can't think of a specific example, but this is really putting me on blast. There's like the occasional young lady who's maybe like upper teens, low twenties, and they're a first timer and they're like, Hey, I'm so happy to be here. Do you have any recommendations? And I kind of like just jump straight to the sweet stuff. Yeah. Like latte world. But they actually like work in coffee and they're like, I was actually looking at like your buy the cup options and milk child. And I'm like, oh, I missed. <laughs> that's why it's probably always better to what lead in with, uh, that, what do you usually yeah, drink? That, that was years ago. Yeah. Cause it's, now it's always like, give me a, give me a something hot, yeah. cold, creamy, straight up. Cause, uh, which is a good, good thing that co- I think coffee is just getting more popular and people of all walks of life are into the, the nerd stuff and all walks of life are into the, the flavored flavored stuff. Have yeah. you guys ever went to a coffee shop and like ordered a cappuccino and they're like, I just just want to let you know, like we we serve a traditional cappuccino, so it's gonna be a little stronger. And you're like, I know. No, that's never happened to you. Never. Maybe we just that's like exude specialty coffee. Yeah. Hasn't happened to me in a long time. I think it's because like people don't do that very often. Yeah, and people know you like anywhere you go. Yeah, they know. That's yeah. what you were going to say. Mm-hmm. They know you like your coffee strong. Like, oh my gosh, it's Riley mm-hmm. from Valor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the Valor Coffee Podcast. Okay. Um, my questions are so I'm taking this trip, doing a one small part of my trip to Japan as a bar takeover on June 5th in Harajuku. If you're, sir, if you're in Harajuku. So if you're in Harajuku, uh, Tokyo on June 5th, I'll be at Sadai Coffee with Ariel. Uh, I brought two coffees to serve and I went on Shopify, like made an order. What are the two coffees that I brought? Oh, I saw that. Columbia Santa Maria. Okay. 
That's one. And free throw. Uh, wrong on both accords? Wrong on both accords. Dang. Wait, I may have gotten a kilo of Columbia okay. yeah, to put on I espresso. Thought. But I was mainly, I think then I may have brought three, but I did I, also get some free throw retail, but I don't know if that's going to. Okay. Like, so I was right. Well, the two that I'm thinking I, I'm going to be doing, because I, apparently they do, they do mostly pour overs. It's like mostly, and those say hand drip. Hmm. So I'm like, oh, I might not take that. This. All right. All right. What do you think? Two coffees. Uh, work a Sakaro. Okay. And. Um, Marco. Oh yeah. Okay. So I double pink box. No, I did the Chiroso and the Marco Tulio. Okay. And that kind of connects back to what you're saying. Those are the two coffees that have connection. Remember? Cause we met the guy, we, the guy, Marco Tulio is the bus driver (laughs) for the guy we met, Ariel at SCA. And I was like, Oh, that's so cool. And then here's pictures of him him and his farm. I'm like, this is awesome. This dude is great. I'm excited to serve this guy. I'm even more excited to sh- make this coffee for people now. Yeah. And then getting to talk to Santiago and Albedo, the hombres of the Chiroso hombres a lot. I'm like, knowing these guys makes yeah. me want to serve their coffee. Right. No doubt. Now, yeah. are these probably my two, two favorite bangers. my two favorite coffees and the two most expensive coffees we have? Yes. Yeah. Those, it's all, those, it kind of all does go that way, yeah. too. We never really talked about that, but... The more direct and more like single farm you're getting, and which is great for them. A lot of times that just means you're entering into a premium level, which is something that we'll get to later is your experience with premium coffees. All of my experience. Yes. Okay. My second thing was not a question. It was more of a statement. And I know we're getting into more coffee stuff and it would have been better to do at the top of the show. But guys, I'm officially not doing fantasy football this year. Whoa. I, I just want to be a student of the game this year. Oh, my gosh. I just want to, like, I want to sit back and relax and enjoy football this year. Yeah. I get I get too wound up. Maybe you should still do it and just not get so wound up. See, I, tr- I tried that the last couple of years, and I think if you ask my wife if I, if I won that contest, I would have lost. Mm. You always look over and say, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm nothing. Mm. Just checking, checking my scores, checking the stats. I just, I care too much. That's my, that's my weakness. I care too much. I work too hard. Dude, I can't believe you're really not going to do it. I, I need to be a student of the game. I'm going to watch less football this year. Well, I'm sure. trying to watch more football. I'm trying to go to more football games. I do want to go to more football games. I think I have my siblings and by association, my parents and talked can- into going to Vegas to see Falcons at Raiders. Oh, oh that gosh. would be sick. Yeah. So Allegiant we'll see. Stadium? Just flights to Vegas are so dirt cheap. Yeah. Uh, They're like $70. It, it's probably like probably 70 bucks one way, honestly. Yeah. So I really want to do that one. I was like on the checkout page for Falcons Chiefs as well. Oh, that's a home game though, right? Sunday night football. Oh, that's going to be sick. Yeah. How much? Not as bad as you'd think. Like 150 They've probably gone up since because I looked right when the schedule was dropped. But I don't know the market sub, of tickets. Sub two hundred a piece, upper level. Do tickets get cheaper the more bad your team gets over the season, or do you think they just stay the same? When they you- definitely get cheaper because of resale, and people are just like, "I just want to resell these tickets. I yeah. got to do it." And then, do you think they just get more expensive if, like, if the Falcons just come out hot and they just keep winning? I mean, by the end of the year, and then, you know, like if the playoffs were a sellout, because that's the thing, it's like that stadium never sells out. That Chiefs game is going to be a sellout. And. Oh, that sounds so fun. Yeah. Do we have any chance of winning? Yes. Yeah. I think we're going to win that game. It's the NFL, man. Chiefs suck at the beginning of the season, dude. I love this. And their team is in shambles. Their team's in shambles. Yeah, dude. Rasheed Rice, Harrison Butker, just a lot of Butker. drama going on. <laughs> Dude, I think oh you just found our gosh. topic for the rest of the show. Yeah, we're not gonna get into that. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I I wanna. I I'm gonna always because I would watch football 
all day, Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday night last year. I was probably just like a bad guy because I was watching too much and football. People didn't want to be around you because you kept trying to tackle them. Yeah. I just, <laughs> like, like, on, hike. it's just like you are what you, you take in. So I was a football player. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so this year I'm like, I, I'm going to watch games where I'm like hanging out with other people. Yep. And I'm going to watch the Falcons and Georgia Tech. And that's it. Sorry about your lack of coffee there. No, hey, no problem, my man. Respect on that. Yeah, I put some respect on. We'll that. see if it actually happens, or if I just devolve into watching a lot of games. Anyways. Well, now the whole world is accountable to the fact that I will not be um, doing fantasy football. You're just tired of winning. I, you know, I did pretty Who's well. Your, who is your keeper? Who are you going to lose? I can't remember. I, I feel like. I don't know if I had one. Mm. You didn't have a single keeper worthy player. Dude, I don't remember. I had two leagues. My keeper is Amon Ross St. Brown. Oh. But I also have Derrick Henry. He's been my keeper for years in a row. He should not be your keeper. But he's not going to be this year. Yeah, I mean, he may have a little renaissance with the Ravens. Yeah, but Amon Ra, goaded. That boy's smooth. Do you guys think that the Texans will make it to the Super Bowl? No. no. I think the Packers cool. will make it to the NFC Championship. Maybe. You listen to an overreaction Monday? No, I've stayed away from uh, Rich Eisen as well. He just lives in the hypothetical too much for me. <laughs> That's the offseason. He, That's he the off-season. loves to talk about Kirk Cousins throwing the first pitch at the Braves game. He brings it up every single episode. Like that's what he's talking about. He's like, the Falcons are just betrayed Kirk Cousins. He's in the city. He's throwing the first pitch at the Braves game every single every single episode. He's saying <laughs> he's that. mad about the Penix pick. Yeah, I just can't. I can't believe that it's people's job to just talk about basically nothing. It's us right now. I well, mean, we're like, not getting paid. You know, to do this. we. I mean, we, we kind of are. We do this yeah. once a week, though. Yeah. Think about if you he does it all day, every, every day, three day. hours, every day. Yeah. On Roku. <laughs> With the desk brought, brought to you by Granger. The yeah. desk furnished by Granger. Yeah. Hey, what did someone ask? That we don't have to stay on football because, but didn't didn't we have an email about like what? Did, yes. What do we think about Kirk Cousins? For coming? sure. Yeah. Maybe I'll just say really quickly. You know, I was kind of cold on it. I wish we would have just drafted Penix. I understand his development, blah, blah, blah. Looking at his actual salary, a lot of people always say four-year, $180 million contract. If you look at the actual payouts, it's really like he's pretty mid-tier paid quarterback for the next two years. And I think that's where he will perform, and that's where we'll get paid to do. And then we'll move on on year three and have uh, Penix. Yeah. That's what I think will happen. I think that is kind of smart. Yeah, Kirk is not here past two years. Let's be clear. Unless he wins the Super Bowl. No, I still think not. Really? I think he could win a Super Bowl the next two years and not be here in year three. I know, that's crazy. You're not going to, they're not going to let him have like one down year where it's like, oh, we should have. Overreaction Wednesdays. I'm saying he could do as much as win the Super Bowl the next two years in a row. Why do you say that? He could do that and then not be here year three because they're not going to let this Penix pick look dumb on them. It's not going to happen. Oh, you're thinking about the front office. Yeah, I'm thinking about the front office. That'd be really dumb if you've won two Super Bowls. He, he's, he'll go into the Falcons' ring of honor, but they won't keep him his entire contract. Or they'll try to... Tr- I mean, listen, if he's performing at MVP level, they'll try to trade him. That's fair. Because then his contract is not that expensive the, in the next two years. Which he has a no trade class. I did read he's been doing amazing at training camp, and Penix is the one with the volatility, which mm. kind of gives some good, uh, makes you feel better because you're like, oh, he needs development. Penix yeah. is missing some throws. Yeah, he's overthrowing some guys, uh, <laughs> not leading them the way he should, but uh, he's hot and cold. Yeah. Our our emailer was Jessica from Cafe Imports. <laughs> she she lives in Minnesota, <gasps> and Jessica. so Vikings fan. Big Vikings fans. They uh like she said that like they didn't want Kirk anymore. Oh. They wanted to move on. So Riley, you just got back from New York City. Allegedly. How long were you there? Friday to Monday. And why? 
And why did you go? Because I wanted to. You went with your wife. Correct. Your lovely wife, Michaela. Yes. JFK or LaGuardia? <sighs> it's a sore subject. Really? LaGuardia in Newark out. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That's rough. On accident. <laughs> yeah. Um, what kind of coffee did you have? Where'd you go? I went to one, two, Three, four, four, five coffee shops. Okay. Which is way more than I usually go to on trips. Can you name them all? La Cabra. Oh, I forgot. Drip. Uh, Se. Deglo. Watch House. Now I rank them. I think them. that was all of them. Yeah, rank them. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You can say they're all great. Now you're ranking. They were all great. Okay. Now for the real after that. Dayglo. Number one. We'll go tie Watch House La Cabra. Oh. Never heard of Watch House. Same. What do I have left? You have uh, say. say and. Say. Drip. 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 Yeah. Drip. drip is just like a multi roaster. We were oh. kind of just like passing by there. It's in uh, like a lobby. So as far as experience goes, it definitely just wasn't like the experience, yeah. you know, it, it was, there was no music playing in there. It was just like a sleepy kind of like morning vibe. Um, but it was good. I'm not saying it wasn't good. You just asked me to rank them. Oh, sure. You said they're all great. You asked me to rank them. Uh, why don't you just touch on your top three about what made them great? Sure. Day glow. I was greeted by excellent service. Oh. Incredible. Incredible coffee offerings, incredible seasonal beverages. Were they all were all the places busy or were all of them slow? Or was it kind of a mix? It was kind of a mix. Would you believe that? <laughs> what? I or was, was the, it medium? <laughs> I was the only person in drip, again, because I think it was like a Sunday morning in what seems like a lobby of a place. Everybody oh, yeah. was at church. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's New York City. Uh, <laughs> say was busy. Like there was people in there and there was a line. Um, what were the other ones? La Cabra. Like busy? La Cabra. No. Say was like decently busy. What does that mean? I don't know. There's like a few people in line. La Cabra line to the door. Okay. And it's like a decently long space. So long line. Watch house. Crazy busy. Like effed up busy? Like effed up. And then Day Glow wasn't very busy. Like you called the fire marshal? Yes. I called, I, I was worried about occupancy. <laughs> Someone's got to, someone's got to be. Day Glow has Night Glow, which is like their brewing arm, brewery arm. What? And so they also just have like booze, I guess. Yeah. Al al like alcoholic beverages. So they have an entire seasonal menu that you is, can get. They're like side by side. And the ingredients change. You can get the same drink, alcoholic or non-alcoholic. Oh. Oh, wow. Very cool. I like that. Did yeah. you get any of those? I We got non-alcoholic beverages. Why? <laughs> <laughs> we got kind of worn out on drinking. What? Yeah. And it was awesome. The guy there, extremely nice. I believe he was one of the co-founders. And... You sure he wasn't just a nice guy? You know, people say that at Valor. They're like... Do you own this place? I don't. I'm not saying he was nice because he was a co-founder. I was just also, I was stating two different facts. Oh, like you talked to him and he was like, I'm a co-founder. Co he did not say that. He said, I just, oh, he's a I'm coner. making an, an assumption. He said, I'm a coner. Yeah. Okay. So you don't know if he was a co-founder. I, I do know because. You Googled him. I, I did look at Dago's about page and it was him. Okay. That's kind of creepy, I Riley. I know. I know. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm free. That, that, that's messed up. Moving on. Watch House. Crazy. Where was out. it? Where in New York? It was three blocks south of Central Park. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, really close. And we were walking because we just wanted coffee. It was right before dinner. And we were walking to Blue Bottle. And I've, just, I've been to Blue Bottle a lot of times, so I'm just going to be honest. I wasn't very excited about going to Blue Bottle. And yeah. then we, it was just one of those situations where we passed by it, and I was like, oh, my gosh, look at this place. 
I've got to see a picture. Walked on in, got an $18 washed Panama Geisha, <laughs> and it was top five coffees I've ever had. My Roasted good. by them. Roasted by them, but couldn't find it in there. They were only selling Nespresso pods of their coffees. Hmm. That is a... I, I'm, very, <laughs> I'm very intrigued. Yeah, but you know, like, because Nespresso is actually good. Yeah. Did they yeah. have a, a did they have a Nespresso pod of the Panama Geisha? No, because that would be wild. You just said Nespresso pods are actually good. Yeah, that's like a thing that you know. This Kent told us this. Like the machines, like they brew you can coffee. Brew well. Good coffee, yeah. So if you just have good coffee, this we, is their space from a really weird angle. But I was capturing one thing here. Holy crap! Oh, that's really cool. And this is the one thing I was capturing: projector menu. Oh my oh, gosh. Yeah. Let's go. Sick. They look professional. I took some things from them. I took that and then also on their tables, you can just sit down, scan this code, mm. and your beverages will be brought to you. Nice. I don't like that. Okay. That's fine. You don't have to. Burn it down. I really like their tile though. That was yeah. That was smooth. So watch house. Very cool. I'm a fan now. And then La Cabra. Incredible baked goods. Oh. Insane. And incredible coffee. The guy there was really nice after he got my name. Oh, then he, he realized he wanted you to were keep talking Riley about from Baylor. No, he wanted to <laughs> he wanted to keep talking because I had my camera around my neck. He wanted to talk about my camera. And then he was like, All right, Riley, we'll have your stuff right out. And he said you just saying someone's name, you know? Sounds you take good. notice of that. We like that. Yeah. It's music to their ears. Yeah. Excited. Music to my ears to hear my name. Then everybody starts going, Riley. Yeah. Dude, what yeah. if when you had a drink ready, you had everybody on the team like slowly start to chant. It's like, Riley, 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 yeah. Riley. I would probably never go to that place again. Yeah, well, same. Think about it. <laughs> well, you're about to go to that place today. It's called Valor. Yeah. It actually happens a lot at Valor. Jessica! <laughs> And then Say was good. I took a lot of things from how they were doing their roasting operation behind the, the glass wall. Mm. That was cool. Uh, coffee was pretty good. And those were my experiences. Hey, that is awesome, man. What did you like more? The coffee scene or the food scene or the cocktail bar scene or the pizza scene? I did ate- you get a slice of pizza? I ate pizzas twice. What about a hot dog? But not, I didn't eat like, I did not get a hot dog. I didn't get like dollar pizza. We like actually got pizza. Did you see the guy from Barstool Sports? Barstool? Barstool. Dave Portnoy? I did not see Dave Portnoy. No. <laughs> Crap. Not on this trip anyways. Oh, okay. I. Dave is just out in the streets. I'm, of- if I'm being honest, I know this is just blasphemy because I'm, I'm a coffee podcaster, but coffee is never the highlight. Of a trip that I go on for the most part. Dang it, Why Riley. Dayglow was one of the highlights and, and Watch House and La Cabra. Like you like, left happier than you came in? Yeah, for sure. Oh, that's nice. But I just, I think I, whenever I go somewhere, I, I'm, I've had these reservations at these, a couple of restaurants that I went to for a long time. And like, that was like one of the reasons we were going to New York. Sure. And they were the two best restaurants I've ever been to. So. Wait, what? Yeah. Dude, Village Burger is right down the street. <laughs> I know. That's nice for me. What were the restaurants? What did you get? My favorite, it's just so different. It's so different, okay? And just go with me here. We don't have the money to eat at these places. I'm going to be completely You've clear. Got a credit card. <laughs> I've got a credit card and I'm broke now. And, uh, but one of them was The Modern. Oh, and, oh, cool. Which is the restaurant inside of MoMA. Like the cafeteria, right? It's the cafeteria, no. Uh, and then the other one was called Gabriel. I don't know if I'm saying his right last name right. Cruther. <laughs> you think it's Cruther? Yeah. <laughs> it might be. Could be wrong. <laughs> I don't know. Which we learned afterwards that Gabriel was the former executive chef at the Modern. Wow. Oh, that was I'm, pretty cool. I'm detecting a pattern. I know. I know. That loves art. We went to Gabriel uh Right, basically, right after we got to off the plane, we went to the hotel and then we went to eat. And we, the restaurant's his name, Gabriel Cruiser. Yeah, and it's it like Tim Wendelbo was, you know, 
lunch menu, they were like, you can either get prefixed, the, the dishes are a little bit bigger, or you can get like the chef's tasting menu, but it's smaller. Like it won't be, it won't be that much food. It's only five courses. But then there was a mousse bouche. And then there was always like, <sighs> like many parts Aperitifs. of another pre, pre parts of courses. And we just left because you see those dishes at, at these places and they're like super small and you're like, I'm going to have to go get a sandwich afterwards. I was gorged. <laughs> Gorg- engorged? Engorged? You're engorged. Disgorged. Di- I was disgorged. Ungorged. <laughs> and uh, it was amazing, especially compare- compared to, <sighs> okay, I'll just say it. The modern was $100 more per person than than Gabriel. Right. Gabriel's the lunch anyways. So who knows for dinner? If I had to recommend, if I, if I hear someone going to New York, I'm going to be like, go there for lunch. Cause it was incredible experience, Cruiser? especially for the money. Yeah. Modern. I had the best dish I've ever had, which was their, uh, one of their leading dishes, eggs on eggs on eggs. Eggs on eggs on eggs. Yes. Call it E3. Yeah, it was like, I can't remember what the third egg component was, but it was like like poached egg yolk in this like creamy stuff and caviar and then like a stick of like like a thin piece of like brioche, like mm. bread stuff. Mm. Okay. And it was crazy. Do you it say, was nuts. Do you feel bad eating such beautiful food? Yes. You're like, sorry. I know. Sorry. Yeah. But it was crazy. And I will maybe never eat like that again. Because you're broke. Because I'm broke. How much money is in your bank account now? Less than before. That's a good answer. Yeah. Dude, I'm glad you had fun. You seem refreshed. You look fresh. Yeah. I think you got a little bit of a tan, too. I don't, I don't really think that I got rest. Rest, what? rest, not rest in the sense of uh, being away. Like you I need guess. to take another vacation? But I, I'm going to need a vacation after that vacation. Yeah. Vacation does that sometimes. But I haven't been in New York in five years. So it was cool to go back. Time to hit your quota. Yeah. And I probably won't go for another few years because it's, it's an exhausting place. Dude, the city that, that never sleeps. That's right. Was the pizza good? The pizza was really good. I went to this. We DoorDash pizza from Lombardi's, which is the first pizza restaurant in America. What? Yeah. And it was good, but then the best pizza was from this place called La Industry, I believe. Mm. La in- believe. Industry, <laughs> I believe. <laughs> and it uh, it was really good. Me and Michaela kind of like walked up to it around eleven forty. They opened at twelve, and there was no one in line. We're like, okay, we'll just stand here, and then just like a line of fifty people forms, Jeez. like from that point until twelve. Oh my gosh! Did yeah. you you got in the line of fifty? We were, we were first oh, in the you, line. Oh, okay. I thought yeah. you were saying like you left. And you're like, oh, I'll just come back. No, at 12. it was, but it was wild, and their pizza was really awesome. It did was, you get pepperoni? I mean, my pizza had pepperoni on it. I guess meat lovers. <laughs> got the meat lovers. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like pepperoni pizza. Now I went to Attaboy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I you're just gonna disregard my statement? Yeah, I am. <laughs> Dude, that got me so good. Went to Attaboy, went to Employees Only. Both, 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 both amazing. Ad, I needed to tell you this. Dude, you wouldn't be able to, to enjoy Attaboy. It's too small? It's too small. Like, literally, so the, the stools are fixed, and I had to sit like this at the bar. Like a so lady. I, I think your legs... Would be so, so long that they would like <laughs> hit the stool next to you. You Dang. just have to stand up. Jeez. Or like put your knee on the stool or something and like stand up and like do one of these. <laughs> yeah, I could sort of, I could sort of workshop different ways I could fit in there, but yeah, yeah noted. Got some flips. Yeah. Uh, and what's a flip? A flip is a co- a dessert ish cocktail made with a whole egg. Remember when we got flips at Attaboy? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> Michaela's flip, dude. Flipping awesome. It was crazy. He came up, he he came up with it on the spot. And it was like tequila passion fruit. So it wasn't like, you know, how flips are always kind of like more coffee chocolatey. Yeah. This was like 
brighter. Fresh flip. And it was nuts. Kick flip. Yeah. Man, that's cool. Yeah, you really uh you really get some alien like flavors out of cocktails. Like <laughs> yeah. flavors Tell that you. <laughs> like I'm not I don't mean like little green man, alien. Oh. <laughs> Ethan. I mean like sort of like out of this world flavor. <laughs> <laughs> Like you know, mixology is actually an art, Ethan. And and if you're uh, listening to this podcast, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're just not used to that with coffee. It's just so inherently complex, you know. Right. Well, actually, you can mix other other stuff too in cocktails. That trip, I had several cocktails with clarified milk. Or several. Like, oh, like wow. Milk washed, uh, you know, punches, whatever. And it makes me want to do clarified milk. It'd be like a centrifuge type situation. Yeah. It makes me want to do clarified clarified milk in cold brew, I think would just enhance the texture. Mm. Yeah. Like wild. Does one buy clarified milk or does one make I clarified milk? You just gotta milk? make it, right? You just milk, add some citrus, curd up, and then filter. I've got it in my cocktail books. My mm. death and death and code. We're talking about two different things: clarified milk and distilled. Or you said we also talked about distilled milk. I right? meant to say clarified milk. Right? This whole time, yeah. Oh, okay, that makes a lot more sense. I'm just an idiot because I was thinking about distilled coffee, which is what Day uh, Dayglow was serving in their a lot of their seasonal beverages, which I don't even know what that means. Distilled coffee, yeah. Like wow, the, we're gonna look really dumb now. I don't know. I look dumb because I said distilled milk earlier, and I meant to say it was off camera. Milk. Yeah, it was off camera. So oh, now it's much on camera. Happen. Yeah. So clarified milk, you know, you let it curd up, filter it, and then you you're left with just like clear whey beverage. What? Yeah. I guess. Do you just use it as like a a cream factor? That's what I'm wondering if you do that because most of the cocktails, most of the punches, they they will. They'll mix milk, the booze, the other ingredients, and then they'll put the citrus in there and let it curd all together. What? But I'm like re- passing the coffee back through a filter over and over again. I don't want to do that. I think that's a bad idea. I think you just need to distill, sorry, clarify the milk alone. Yeah. If you've ever clarified milk and put it in coffee, please comment below and let Dude, us it's know. It's probably really easy to, to figure out yeah. here. True. Right, Ethan? You, you can get, do that when you get back from Japan. First order of business. I just think that could be a beverage all on its own, kind of. If you're wanting just like more texture, just like cold brew and clarified milk. Yeah. And just like really thick, velvety stuff. How much do you yield, do you think, from a gallon? I don't know. You lose a lot in the... Oh, I have so many questions. But we'll wait for someone to tell us what clarified milk is. It looks like we need to pull a blind taste test out of nowhere and see what happens. Double blind at that. Double blind. DBT. Guys, anything else on your hearts? Uh, there's something you said earlier that I really wanted to go back to. but that offended you? <laughs> no, no. But I think maybe it, it might be for another episode. It was about... Uh, it was about how... It was, it was earlier, early, early in the, the program where you were talking about baristas that we hire... We want them to be themselves. Mm. And I was thinking about contrasting that with uh, this like age old narrative. That's like people in the food service industry are like notorious for like doing coke in the back or like or like being (laughs) drunk while they're they're working because like they're just being they hate dealing with people so much that they have to have something to cope with that fact. And then maybe they're like fake nice at the table or they're good at their job and that's why they do it. Uh. So like contrasting that with like hiring someone who is genuinely a hospitable and caring human. uh, Those are just so different, but you could have like somewhat of a similar experience with both of those people or could you? I don't know. We don't have to talk about it right now, but I just think that's interesting. Yeah, I don't know 
Yeah, we can get into it later, but I'm, I might have to do some brain work of like, have, have I ever had like a truly awesome hospitality experience and then like gotten to know that person later and realized they actually like hate what they do? Yeah, or, or like you, you may have heard. Or they do coke in the back, what are you saying? Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, you may have heard someone say like, you know, you have to put on the show and, and be this like hospitable smiley version of yourself in order to protect your real self Mm. like to because if you were like actually connecting with guests then it would be too exhausting or it would be people would uh like it's it's the service industry so like customers are mean so like you might get hurt guard yourself yeah i just think that's interesting and i i've done i've done both like i've I've done coke in the back, you know, like I've been that guy. Stop. Just kidding. Um, I, what I'm saying is I've done like the fake nice thing because I'm feeling really, really bad Mm. that day. Mm. Life's not going good or something, or I'm stressed. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to put on a smile Mm -hmm. and get through this thing. Um, and then I've also just been like fully me, but like me cares about other people. So this is real. This is me. I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Uh, well, th- what's interesting yeah. there is you can get into like, what's the most real thing about you, the way that you consistently love people or your bad day, you know, like, what are you letting define your work? Mm-hmm. Cause a lot of people would be like, I just need to be myself. And that's like mad and ticked off. But I'm like, Rrr. what if you realize who you really are, which is a loving, hospitable person and you overcame your circumstance. Yeah. I'm not saying that's every day. Sometimes people got to go home. That happens. I left work one time when my grandma passed away. I was really upset. And everybody sent me home. So that happens too. But um, that's a good, good, good thought, man. Yeah. I, I, yeah, we just want to find people that love it. Yeah. Love taking care of people in their core. Yeah. I guess it's, it's just pointed towards like longevity. Do you, do you achieve longevity in the hospitality industry by, kind of like cynically guarding yourself Mm -hmm. or do you achieve it by finding purpose in your your mission in life through your work like probably the second one yeah and like i'm different i'm probably different on and off the bar but my heart to serve and love people is the same on and off the bar you know what i mean like when i'm at concierge i'm going to be more like bubbly and fun and maybe if i'm just in a different position in the cafe i might be more locked in yeah because i'm like doing a different task it's like to say if like i'm at the farm dumping compost and i don't have like a huge smile on my face that i'm like faking it but i'm like no i still love taking care of people i'm just in another situation right now yeah yeah, like bubbly temporary happiness isn't the end all be all. Yeah, because yeah, I think, <clears throat> yeah, it's it's different now doing different parts of the job. And I'm sure you guys can relate, but uh, I guess the why. Hey, Simon Sinek, what's your why, man? There it is. Yeah. We always make it back there, huh? I'm cutting us off. We got to hang up. Yeah. Well, Producers we hope you've enjoyed this episode where we talked about nothing. And everything. And kind of everything. Probably pretty similar to a normal podcast. Yeah. If we didn't, you know, rake ourselves over the coals about it. That's true. Well, until next week, where Ross will be diving in with Jared Truby. Diving in with Jared Truby. Wi-Fi willing. Wi-Fi willing. Wi-Fi willy. <laughs> we got to call Wi-Fi willy. <laughs> Get him out here. Can we start doing a send-off by saying au revoir? You can. Au revoir.